Welcome to the Zentangle Project Pack series. Today, I'm going to be working with Project Pack number 10. My name is Martha, and I'm so glad that you've decided to spend some time with me today. This video is part of the series that we're calling the Zentangle Legend. To learn more about the Zentangle Legend, you can watch Project Pack number 10 intro video. So today we're going to be using this custom booklet designed by us here at Zentangle HQ. It's a lovely little booklet. And we always encourage anybody that doesn't have this special materials for today's videos that they can follow along with whatever materials that you have. If you're interested in purchasing a project pack number 10, they're available from our certified Zentangle teachers and at Zentangle.com. So this is your booklet to keep. This is yours to make it your own. And we encourage you to follow along with us, but of course, making changes along the way that would make your book special to you. So today I'm gonna to be working with the legend marked L2. See that in the bottom corner of this spread here. Um, and it's almost, beautiful just as it is, but we're going to be filling it in with the theme that I've chosen to add to legend number two is spirals. So all the tangles that I'm going to be doing with you today involve a spiral in one shape or another. And we were given two pens to work with in this project pack. And so I'm going to start out with the brown pen today. And I'm going to get us started on this tangle and then maybe tell you a little bit about um, where this particular tangle came from. I'm going to be working with the tangle called Mooka, and it doesn't normally live in a spiral format, but we're going to kind of morph it and change it into a spiral. So Mooka tends to have a long, flowy stem to it, but I'm going to kind of cut it short and make little tiny squat mukas and have them play in around in a circle. Feel free to follow along or watch me first so you can get the hang of it. I'm going to begin, I'm going to use this space number three right here, and I'm going to begin by um, creating a circle to build my spiral on. And the circle is going to be made of four little mooka shapes. Now I'm probably going to work in my spiral going clockwise, but you can feel free to go counterclockwise. It's up to you. So around about the middle here, I'm going to draw a small mooka shape. A little tighter here for you. And then turning my book, I'm going to start the next one right on top of it, just like that. And turning my book, and then once again. So now we're going to build on this right about where we started. Just following along, building each mooka shape on top of the one that we just did. Not really having to worry about where the next one lands, just as long as you are turning your book and building off the one that we just made. I love working in spirals because it really does let you let go of any expectation of where you're supposed to put your next stroke because you just have to keep following the spiral. You can see how our 
mukas are taking shape here in a much different way than they normally do. All tucking into one another. It's a wonderful challenge for yourself to take any tangle that, they, that you enjoy drawing and seeing if you can put it into a spiral format. And I'm tucking these in as they hit the border, but you may decide to jump across the border. That's up to you. The way we spell Mooka is M-O-O-K-A, which is kind of a phonetical spelling of the name of Alphonse Mooka, who is a famous artist, one of my mom's favorites, and Maria was inspired by his embellishments of his illustrations with this lovely shape that he used to draw. And that's where the name of this tangle came from. I'm gonna go right to the edges here. When we uh, started coming up with this idea of talking about different Zentangle legends, um, we were laughing because we all have our own story of how we came to be working at Zentangle. And oh, this one's going to live out here, I think. And one of my first jobs, if not my very first job here at Zentangle HQ, was actually naming tangles. And it sounds like a very silly job, but actually it was pretty fun. Um, they didn't always have actual patterns to, uh, to match with the names. I just started coming up with some fun, whimsical, silly names. So we had sort of a, a bank of names to work with and sometimes the patterns came later. Okay, so here we have our basic muka spiral, and I think I'm just gonna add um, some other uh, little elements of, of detail here, if you want to, or you can, you can actually leave it just like this. But in each one of these, stems, if you will, I'm just going to add a little line like that. It doesn't take much pressure to put that ink down. I love how small details sometimes have a very profound effect on final product. Little touches. Now, because we have uh, another color pen, I think I'm going to pick that up and I'm going to pick up my black 01 pen and I'm going to fill in the background of all of these mukas very carefully and methodically. Um, you can start in the center and move out, or I'm going to change my perspective here and work my way from one corner to the next and just take my time and fill in these nice little background spaces. I love the way the brown and the black work together. I am trying to be mindful of not covering the brown ink that I've put down because you want to have that color play, that black and brown together. Just 
adding a little rounding where this one snuck out. Crazy little mooka. It's funny, some, some tangle names and the story of the names are easily recalled by all of us and then there are others that none of us can remember how it got its name. And then in the end we realize it doesn't really matter what these things are called. They're all just beautiful lines on beautiful paper. I think these legend books are so sweet. And I've been working my way through mine and I can't wait. I can't wait to see it finished, but I really don't want it to end. Of course, I suppose I could do some more legends. But it's, uh, it will become a wonderful resource of tangles. Some new, some old favorites. Some just in a different format than we're used to seeing. Little spot right here. There. Well, we can add a little bit of shading if you like. And I'm using the side of my pencil. And I'm going to be careful not to put graphite in that rounded area. I'm going to kind of stick with the, oops, sorry about that, stick with the sides. But I'm just going to take my time and turn the book each time because I think that helps my hand kind of keep the graphite on its edge and that will make it um, much easier also to smooth into the paper. Of course anytime we add shading we want to make sure we leave specific places unshaded in order to have that new depth perspective that the shading adds so well. And with my tortillon, which you will have in your toolkit there, I'm just going to gently work that graphite In. I love that sound that it makes on the paper when you have a, a if you're taking a class, a Zentangle class with a group of people and everybody's doing their shading, it's, it's that sort of hum of tortillons. You know that good stuff is happening. There, that looks awesome. So there's our first spiral. Now we don't have a blank legend. Now we have something down here, something to, to something to admire. So the next one I'm going to do is kind of a, a classic old tangle. Really, it's been around since the beginning, and it's not often seen in a spiral shape but it seemed in my mind to be a very logical one to adapt. So I'm going to start with my black pen, my black 01 pen, and I'm gonna work in this space right here, number 15, but any space will do. This is your legend after all. And I'm going to begin by drawing, you guessed it, a spiral. <laughs> And I'm going to fill this whole space with a spiral, and that is my going to be my playground for putting in this tangle. So I'm starting in the middle, and again, this time I'm going to work counterclockwise, but either way will 
be successful. So I'm going around and I'm going to work on keeping my spacing, my aurid space, if you will, fairly consistent so that this sort of the channel that the spiral creates is, is somewhat consistent. Again, hand drawn, of course, and if it isn't, it's all right. But I'm, that's what my that's what my goal is. And I'm going to draw this spiral all the way to the edges as if it were going behind what was there. All right, so we're going to do a tangle inside here called Xander, Z-A-N-D-E-R, and it is one of the early tangles. And it's a very much a, um, a wonderful textured tangle. And it's typically drawn in a linear, or like a straight, a straight-ish line. And I'm just going to adapt it to fit inside my spiral. The way I'm going to start this out is by dividing the spiral into segments. And I'm going to do that. You can start, you can start by watching me. Often when I work in a spiral, I don't start in the very middle because it's kind of Sometimes it's a little bit awkward there, and I sort of figure that out in the end how I want to handle it. So I'll start where I have a regular spacing, and I'm going to start by drawing a band. And it's, see, it's a little curvy to it, and um, I'm doing that on purpose, and I'm going to do it on the other side as well. See, I have a little band that's bending on each end. Then I'm going to give it some space, whichever I, however I decide to make that space, I'm going to want to keep that somewhat consistent throughout my spiral. I'm going to draw another band. And then turning my tile somewhat similar distance, another set of bands, and it's just the simple curves instead of rigid straight lines that add a softness and a sort of a little personality to your work. And don't worry if you're bands line up, or if they don't line up, it's not going to matter in the end. Actually, if, if you're new to Zentangle, working in a spiral, it really reminds you to turn your tile or turn your book as you work. And it will help you when you're not working in a spiral. Um, and it's one of the things that we sort of remind Zentangle practitioners to don't forget to turn your work because we all have a comfort zone and being able to turn your tile to where it's most comfortable for you really offers you the greatest success in loving that line that you're putting down, feeling relaxed and enjoying your creation and the creative process. So you can see my, my sections are pretty similarly spaced. I mean, they're not measured out, but they're, they have a continuity to them. So kind of, I'll go back to my center of my spiral and figure this out. Maybe I'll do one more here. Yeah. 
So this is actually a great uh, base for a number of uh, fragments. You could fill in endless amount of fragments. Um, but in order for this to be called Xander, I'm going to fill it with the original um, intention for it. And now the rest of this is basically just some texturized lines. And so I'm going to start sort of in the middle here so that I can show you and then work my way out and work my way back in. I'm just going to add a series of aurid lines here in this space. And I'm going to I'm going to really play with the the um, the weight of my pen stroke, and I'm going to try to keep it very light. And then every once in a while, I may skip a beat and add. I guess this we used to call it a bit of a sparkle, sort of where you leave a space behind. And if you're consistent and leave it always in the same space, you create kind of a fun highlight. I'm really trying hard to go very, very light with my strokes. So there's our basic filler and each segment is going to have its own shaped line. We're going to be auraing the space that's there. So this stroke will, will aura this outside line here. And I'm going to do the same thing. Just, I'm really going light, 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 light with my pen stroke. And maybe I'll s select a little bit of a different space to leave that sparkle. And it's a fun way to add color dimension without adding anything else but your pen strokes. It's fun to give yourself a, a little challenge like barely touching the paper with your pen. Kind of working on our own motor skills. So we're just drawing just drawing lines, but the focus can be pretty intense. So don't forget to have a breath, pause for a minute if you need to. And lighten up on your pen grip also. If you've never worked in a journal before or a, or a book, it's kind of nice to have that um, permanence to it. You know, you're going to be working, you know, for several hours through this project pack and you'll have this, all of your beautiful artwork in in the same place also makes it really easy to take with you if you are traveling or or just uh, take it to nowadays we can take our phones with us anywhere right and we can bring these videos with us bring this little book a few pens and off you go anywhere. This is a fun, fun tangle to do after one too many cups of coffee. And you'll get a nice, consistently jittery line, but honestly it makes a pretty cool pattern too. I have been guilty of that for sure. I always wonder how it's going to work out in the center of these spirals because usually you're trying to squish what you are intended to into something that's an awkward shape, but it always, it always works out. Maybe we can sneak a few in here. I'll just color in these corners here. This 
So we can add a little um, graphite to this. And I think what I'll do is um, play around with leaving those highlighted areas in the middle of each segment. And I'll just do that by adding graphite on the inside of each band like that. And I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm going to do that all the way around. Again, working with the side of my pencil so I have a little bit more surface area of graphite to work with. And I think the more you get comfortable with shading, the more confident you get with putting, putting it down and that, that fear of ruining your masterpiece kind of fades away and you realize how, how much it adds to, to your work. If I find I've come up against any of my little highlights that I've done, I sort of avoid them, don't go around them. Everybody has their own rhythm of shading. Some people like to put, put all the graphite down first and then go back and rework it. Sometimes I just get anxious to see what it's going to look like, so I kind of uh, do it as I go. Oftentimes you have enough graphite left on your tortillon. If you've missed a spot, you can uh, add a little bit just with what's on the tortillon itself. There we have it, Xander. Looks pretty cool. All right, so the next tangle that we're going to adapt into a spiral is a tangle called I Can This, I-C-A-N-T-H-I-S, which is a, um, a play on the word I can't this, which is a lovely, flourishing, uh, plant that is often seen in William Morris patterns, um, pretty much in the background of everything he does. And when you look at the word written out, the word can't is in the middle of it. And so um, Maria thought it would be fun to just take the T out and say, I can this, which I think is awesome. <laughs> so we are going to um, draw this leafy flowing vine of a tangle and it's quite free form so if you've never drawn it before I do suggest kind of following along with me and it's not normally in a spiral but certainly vines can um, curve and spiral so I thought it would be fun to play with that idea. I'm going to work um, in the corner here on this number 17 and I'm going to start directly with my black 01 pen. And it's going to be a gently curving spiral, not much to it, just enough of a, an idea to say, oh, that's kind of spiraling. And right about the middle, I'm going to curve around and then jump over the fence here, like that. That's it, that's where we're gonna start. And I can, this is, um, I find it to be a fascinating tangle because you almost don't really see what's gonna happen until you put the final step. So follow along with me, have faith, and 
you will be pleasantly pleased, I am sure, with how it comes out. So the first step, and there's going to be a lot of turning around and turning around, so I apologize if we get a little dizzy here. I'm going to start at the beginning in the center, and I'm going to start by adding little veins. These will be the veins of the leaves. And I'm going to add them alternating here and there along the vine, but each way I'm each time I do it, I'm going to have to turn so you can see. I'm alternating them here and there, and I am going to be maybe bumping into the space next door, but fear not, I think it's going to be fine. So turning my tile, adding little veins back and forth. Just leave the, the tip there. So the next step is I'm going to add a little hat, if you will, on top or kind of floating above each one of these veins that we've just drawn. So if you ever get turned around, just remember it started in the center and that's how we're drawing the vine. So the hat that we're going to draw on top, it's not connected to it, it's sort of floating above it and it is re resembles um, those curly parentheses at the end of a, that you can bracket an idea with like that. See that? And I'm going to have one of those floating above each vein that we've just drawn all around on both sides. Even this one here that's going into space number 18. I guess I'll have to figure out what goes in there later. The first time I did this, I thought, what the heck is this going to be? But honestly, it's, it is one of my newer favorite tangles. I don't know about you, but once I really learned something, I just about draw it all the time until I can confidently add it to tiles, kind of get obsessed with it. And this was definitely one of them that I paid a lot of attention to when I first learned it. And it's it's when you do that is you sort of find your own version of what it, whatever tangle it is, the way you like to do it best. And I think that's what makes it so cool that we all have a little personality that we add to these tangles. I'm going to add in between each one of these veins with a little hat on them. I'm going to add floating somewhere. It can be in the center or floating closer to one or the other a little U shape and this is sort of the next step but I'm going to do them both in one step and I'm going to bring it down to a V. This will all become a little bit more obvious when we connect the dots literally. This one's kind of floating up here and I add a little V that I ink in. I guess the beauty of this is that there's no right or wrong area to put these things, just as long as it's somewhere between. So I'm going along one side here, and then I'll go along the inside and do the same thing. Little U shape with. A little darkening of ink underneath. 
And when, we, when we're doing the final step, you may want to add more of these if you feel like it's important. This one will just have a little one. Or the next time you do it, you'll add fewer. So the next step here is a little bit of a leap of faith. And you just have to go at it confidently. That's my only advice. All right. I'm going to start in the center, and I'm going to work my way all around the outside edge, and then I'll go on the inside edge. And what we're creating now is a leaf. So we want it to have a lot of curves and edges. And so it's basically just allowing your pen to have some freedom, but always landing on, we're gonna be landing on the beginning and end of the hat and the beginning and end of these little U shapes that we've created. So I, I landed here, then I'm gonna pick up here, little squiggly line and land. Then I'm going to pick up here, little squiggly line, and land. Little squiggly line with some curls. And then I land on the V. Take off here. Take off here and land here. Take off here. Land here. It's truly the curvier the better. And the more you dance around, sort of the better it comes out. Now we're coming around this other edge. So as long as you have a little V shape to a little hat and connect them however which way you need to turn your pen. There, so hopefully now you can see this kind of cool, viney, leafy shape. And it's interesting, so these little Vs, which seems strange at the time, you can see how that adds a little bit of dimension to the whole thing. And I like to go back even at this point and wherever I have, not wherever, but in some places, I can add a little rounding, which adds the idea of a shadow or maybe even things curving and turning a little bit more. So where you see some curves that you can go back and add a little ink. Doesn't need to be each one, but here and there. Another thing you can do is add a few more um, veins if you want, if you, if you feel like you're Your leaf is turning, and maybe you'd like a few more of these little details. You can even add another um, leaf growing out if you wanted to practice a little more. Remember, we add our little veins here and we put a little hat on top and then in between we add a little V shape And then we link it all together 
with a very curly, exuberant line. And then adding a little dimension. And simply um, adding some graphite down that original that original spiral that we drew. Adding quite a bit down. Beautiful. Alright, so I'm going to share one more spiraling tangle with you. And this one is just something that I've been playing around with. And it's it's a take on, again, another earlier, earlier in the Zentangle legend um, tangle called Flu, F-L-O-O. And flu is kind of starts with a with a, a small spiral and went in a circular motion. And I've just added some different auras going in different directions and came up with this sort of flowy, frothy looking uh, tangulation, if you will. And I'm calling it flu ish, F L O O dash. I S H. So we're going to play around with some fluish in number six down here. So the basic stroke of this tangle is we're going to start out with a spiral on the end of a line like this. Then on this first curve inside the spiral, I'm going to take off from that first curve and come down like that. And then I'm going to add some sort of, I don't know, auras in a bit of a, a chevron, meaning each one will get smaller and smaller. So I take off from the top. come down like this. And then my next one that I do will be a bit smaller and smaller still, smaller still. Then I'm going to go back to this original curve here and do the same thing in the opposite direction, basically. Following the curve of the spiral, So we have sort of a spiral that's curling in on itself. And from here, I'm just going to do many of these starting in, you can start in the same direction, you can start in different directions. And I'm going to just build off of this original one that we just did. So really, you can, you can begin the next one anywhere you like. I'm going to start this one in the opposite direction, and I'm going to go this way. Again, we're going to take off on that first spiral space and come down. And then little auras on the outside that get smaller. And then I come back to the inside. And these little, they're very much shell-like little creatures here, but they grow off of one another very gracefully. And it's fun to play around with the size a little bit. So this one 
slightly larger than some of the others, but then coming back to the inside. As with most tangles that we work with that build with aura, you want to focus on trying to, as I maybe didn't do that so perfectly, I guess the goal is always to try to have your aura spaces be consistent or somewhat consistent. So is this because this is all just lines here. So we end up, I think, although we're working with spirals, we this is very much a texturing tangle. When we're working with a tile or any kind of composite, you like to have tangles that are from sort of different um, themes, if you will. We like to use not all texturing tangles in one tile. But maybe we would like to add some drama or some straight versus curvy or whatever it is, you want to have some opposing features so that they complement each other. Anytime you have naturally occurring spaces where you redefine your lines or your lines meet, you have that darkening of the ink and it's actually something that add, I think adds a lot to the tangle as a whole. These little points of interest if you will. So sometimes I even emphasize that on purpose. Maybe down here adding a little bit of extra ink. So you can see it doesn't matter which way you tuck them in, they all sort of fit together. <clears throat> Maybe one, one last one down here. Isn't that fun? So just kind of simply, I'm going to, with my graphite pencil, just add a little bit of, just a little bit of graphite where these get folded in here, sort of right underneath that first spiral that we drew. the inside of a shell, I guess. I'm sure you could come up with some other fun ways to shade this as well. So I enjoyed uh, sharing with you some unusual spirals 
maybe some that you hadn't tried before. So I invite you all to fill in with some of your favorites and maybe do some research and exploration on some ones that nobody's thought of yet. And I have been working on my own book originally, and I thought I would share that with you. So here you will see the ones that I did to, we did together. I hope everybody can see this. All right, I've gone through, and some of these are just fragments, and some of these are adaption, adaptive tangles, if you will. Um, some of these are old favorites. Marisu there and just fun, fun ways to play within a spiral using a spiral as a string or um, using it with the technique of transcending is another idea. So I hope you enjoyed our time together. I certainly did, and I'm looking forward to getting to work on the rest of my legend. Hope you guys have a great day. Thanks so much for joining me. Bye-bye.